you're at Comedy Central. It's the week of weeks preceding the night of nights. The tension mounts. Will quiz show thrash Ed Wood? Will Pulp Fiction beat out four weddings and a funeral? Will Forrest Gump sneak up behind little women and pull its pants down? Will Lion King put a fish in Nell's locker and dangle loogies on Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? Will Maverick do a titty twister? We'll on... tell you tonight on the MST3K Little Gold Statue Preview Special. It's the MST3K Little Gold Statue Preview Special with your hosts, Tom Servo and Crow T. Robot. Welcome to the MST3K Little Gold Statue Preview Special, the show where we tell you what to think and you accept it at face value with no back talk. Uh, that's Tom. Hi. I'm Crow, and later we'll be going to our own gypsy for live interviews. Ah. And we've got a special in-studio guest, mm -hmm. Ed Asner. Uh, definitely not Mike Nelson playing Ed Asner. Uh, <laughs> folks, you haven't seen any of the thousands of movies nominated for Oscars this year, mm -hmm. and yet you need to have opinions. So use ours. <laughs> well, we better get going, because yep. we haven't seen any any of these movies either. Nope, not a frame. Fortunately, we do have these nifty promo tapes. In fact, they give them away for free. You can tape over them if you want to. <laughs> of course, this year, Hollywood's all a buzz about makeup. Yes, makeup's back. Oh, how can you make a picture where people portray other people without employing makeup? This year's big makeup story is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Let's take a look at the horrifying makeup. Will you marry me, Victor? Tomorrow. Tell me everything. Makeup seems real good, pretty straightforward. That's our choice for best makeup. <laughs> uh, now standing by live, Frankenstein auteur Kenneth Branagh. Welcome, and uh, great job on the makeup, Kenneth. There was a tremendously inspiring story there about how two equals, two equals, very importantly, two partners. All very interesting, but how does makeup affect this? Could um, overcome the, the extraordinary tragedy of the story and have a love that made that somehow was new forged and bigger by the end but for the tragic flaw. Okay, Branna, you don't want to talk makeup? Fine, we'll play your little game and talk theme. Bro, bro, these are pre-recorded clips. He can't hear you. Oh, the hell with them. Next category. And to a clip from Four Weddings and a Funeral, clearly one of this year's nominees for Best Picture. 21, Elephant Tongue. 22, kept falling asleep. That was my first year in England. I do apologize. 23 and 24 together. That was something. Seriously? 27. Oh, now that was a mistake. Suddenly, 27, you make a mistake? Well, yes, he kept screaming. It was very off-putting. I nearly gave up on the whole thing. But Spencer changed my mind. That's 28. Mm -hmm. His father, 29. His father? Mm. 30. Ugh. What's she talking about? I have no clue. Oh. oh, look, it's Mike Nelson, who won't be back later as Ed Asner. Welcome, Mike, and you get... <gasps> oh, God, oh, no! Oh, no. Oh, that oh, is gross! Geez. What would you want to do it more than once? 30, <laughs> what is her problem? Oh. Well, <laughs> despite the disgusting nature of that clip that... and the distasteful subject matter in this piece of <sighs> filth, I think it's a wonderful movie, and it's my pick for Best Picture of 1994. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and now on to Best Actress, a category in which, this year especially, there are several actresses nominated. Miranda Richardson in Tom and Viv, which tells of the majestic love of Tom Bosley and Vivian Vance. Pro! Who, it's the tender story of T.S. Eliot, a man of letters whose wife goes totally mental. Let's have a look-see. I never want to see this late again. I want to live in Europe and write poetry. I love you. Man, you toss a jitterbug up against them reeds, let her set for a minute, give her a twitch, and pow! Yeah. Topwater yeah. bass fishing at its finest, eh? Yeah, <laughs> and it looks like great fishing and a dandy performance, so that's our pick for best actress. You know, it kind of reminds me of Deliverance with the water and all, you know? Oh, yeah, I can see that. Boy, I like that movie a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what else I liked a lot was Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. Came out about the same time. Yeah, you're right. So did Harry and Tonto. Ooh. Boy, that's a great movie. Oh, yeah, that's... 
Oh, 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 well, <laughs> show. well, let's uh, zip over to best director. Always yeah. a tough category. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've decided to base it on looks this year. Yeah, you got Woody Allen. I don't think of him as conventionally handsome. Uh, Christian Krzyzewski. I have no idea what he looks like. Uh, got a clip of Robert Zemeckis, really? uh, supposed to have directed uh, Forrest Gump. Ah. Uh, can you roll that, Cambot? He's sort of every man. He's I got can't say he makes an impression on me one way or another. Uh -huh. I'm left with a blank. Well, we got uh, Quentin Tartikoff, too. You want to see that? Yeah, sure. Oh, my God. Well, it should come as no surprise that neither Tom nor I are prepared to give that guy the coveted best director nod. But we've been toying with you. We've known our pick all along. Let's take a look at our final nominee. Yes, the director of Quiz Show. The numptious, scrumptious, yump dilly umptious Robert Redford. Our runaway choice for best director. Let's take a look at this trophy of a man as he directs. Now, let me explain something. Oh, explain, explain anything, anything to me, Robert Redford. But I won't be able to listen. I'll be dazzled by your weathered features and your g -g -g gorgeous leathery Sundance ass. I can't not watch Robert Redford direct. <laughs> oh, go on, he seems to be saying. I'm not that good looking. Well, yes, you are, Mr. Redford, and you're our unanimous choice for best director. We'll be right back. What a beautiful, beautiful oh, man. Oh, yes. I met him once. No. Oh, yeah. <gasps> you said, did. Get out of the way. No. Ah, welcome back. Let's have another look at the best picture. A category that I lost what can only be termed a substantial amount of money on last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's look at the clip here from the enormously popular Forrest Gump. What's my destiny, Mom? You're going to have to figure that out for yourself. Life is a box of chocolates, Forrest. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, life is like a box of chocolates, huh? Well, I got a different opinion. Life is like a crap sandwich. The more bread you got, the less crap you got to take. No, no, <laughs> life is like a festering boil. Ah, your well, back. um, <laughs> as it is, Forrest Gump is a delight of a movie. I loved it, and I don't think it should have any problem winning Best Picture. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> now let's take a look at Best Costume. We have a lot to celebrate in this particular category, because without the costume, all movies would be nudie films. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I only need to say the words Gerard Depardieu to tell you how horrible that would be. Now, here's a clip from the colorfully costumed Queen Margot. Hey, Jim. Hey! J'ai voulu la paix, Margot. La paix pour les royaumes. La paix pour mes enfants. <laughs> that was one of the Frenchest things I think I've ever seen. Yeah, real foreign-y. Mm -hmm. And that collar. Boy, that was a gratuitous grab at Oscar glory. Mm. Still, I think it should win. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Uh, but let's take a look at fellow nominee Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Take that bloody frock off, Felicia. Don't make it any worse than it is. You think I'm going to let you walk away with all the attention? No chance. Come on, girls. Let's go shopping. Well, I think this baby just blew that little Frenchy political thriller out of the water, eh? Yep, look <laughs> great. Looks yep. like a film that would appeal to your average gay Joe. I think it should win. Yeah, me too. Looks good. Hey, you know what else is really great is Honeysuckle Rose with Willie Nelson, remember? Oh, yeah. Just a lot of good music. Made me feel great. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's worth the rent. You know, I'm a sucker for films of that era, so I really like Lady Hawk with uh -huh. Rutger Hauer. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's really mm. good. I guess we could talk about this all day, but <laughs> now it's time to go into the field and meet the stars with our reporter, Gypsy. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, Mike definitely will not be back later. However, Ed Asner will. Ah. Hello? Hello, Gypsy. <laughs> what do you want? Where are you, and what Hollywood star do you have with you today? I'm in my room, and I'm alone. Uh, well, I expect there'll be some stars stopping by there any time. No, and... I would consider that very unusual if it did happen. Oh. Hello? Hello? What? What? I thought you said something. Nope. My pop tarts are up. Goodbye. Oh, boy, that gypsy, she really makes it come alive for you, doesn't yeah, she, Tom? I can feel the <laughs> pulse of Hollywood. Huh? Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, well, now it's time to move along to the very important best song category. Yeah, because without hit songs, movies would be nothing more than freestanding pieces of entertainment that aren't cross-marketed by multinational parent companies. Let's take a look at Elton John's smash hit from The Lion King, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? And here, Disney supervising animator Tony Fusile talks about meeting Elton John for the first time. I got up about a foot away from him, sitting right next to him, and uh, I was terrified. I mean, it just, you can just sense the power and that you feel incredibly small and weak compared to this massive, uh, intense creature, you know. So it was just uh, pretty intimidating. Wow, what with a combination of the horribly scary Elton John and the awesome legal power of the Disney Corporation, I think they got themselves a best song Oscar. Ah, but let's not forget another nominee, Look What Love Has Done, from the hit film Junior. You should try being a woman sometime. It's a nightmare. Your body goes peculiar with your first period and it doesn't stop until menopause. It's a lifetime of leaking and swelling and spotting and smears. <coughs> Oh, that's real mature, Servo. <laughs> well, she said spotting. Well, do we have a clip from that best song? No, I don't think so, but I can guess how it goes. Look what love has done. Love has lifted me. Lifted me up high enough, so high that I can see. And then it goes on until it ends like, Look what love has done. Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, how about the song you got to make up your mind from the paper? Uh, that'll be faster, you know, get the pulse of the newsroom. <laughs> you got to make up your mind. You got to get back I on like top that. again. <laughs> well, we'll you be right back with more movie and picks no and Ed Asner. In, no <laughs> one's going to stand in your way. <laughs> you got to make up your mind. Don't let Hello and welcome back to the MST3K Little Gold Statue Preview Special with your hosts, us. Later, Ed Asner will be stopping by to share some of his movie memories. When you look at all the movies nominated for Best Picture, Quiz Show is one of them. Quiz Show featured actors acting, a plot, and an outcome. Let's watch. What if we were to put you on the show, put you on 21, and ask you questions that you know? Say the questions that he answered correctly on the test this morning. Uh, I don't follow you. Just thinking out loud. I thought the questions were in a bank fault. In a way, they are. You want to win, don't you? Well, I think I'd really rather try to beat him honestly. What's dishonest? When Gregory Peck parachutes behind enemy lines, you think that's really Gregory Peck? That book that Eisenhower wrote, a ghostwriter wrote it. Nobody cares. Yeah. It's not like we'd be giving you the answers. Just because we know you know, you still know. Right, it's not like you're putting me on the show or Al and pretending <laughs> to be some sort of intellectual. I mean, you have put in years of study and erudition. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine what uh, Kant would make of this. I don't think you'd have a problem with it. Huh. Well, yeah, seems competent. Sure, best picture. Now, that clip just didn't do much for me until I realized it was directed by Robert Redford. <gasps> oh, <laughs> yes, let's have another heaping helping of Robert Redford. Yum. Oh, couldn't you just jump into a pile of Robert Redford? Oh, you just want to nuzzle him and for a brief second maybe just touch the back of his left knee. <gasps> Oh. Ah, where were we? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, on to the best original screenplay category. First, there's Red, the moving, triumphant portrait of Red Fox. Written by Christoph Kielblinsen and Christopher Gergi Fliggen Fliggen Excusez-moi, je... la porte était ouverte. Je suis désolée, je pense que j'ai écrasé votre chien. Uh, so, based on this, people would go and see this film? Yeah, see, this is one of those important oh. films, which means it's boring, and you see it in a theater full of people with B.O., and you pretend that you get it. Well, then, hold your cards, ladies. We have a winner. Yep. This movie will march away with the best original screenplay honors. Also nominated is Heavenly Creatures, the story of two New Zealand schoolgirls and their intense Laverne and Shirley-like relationship. Oh, don't cry, Gina. Oh, Gina, please don't cry. We're not going to be separated. We're not. <laughs> they can't make us. They can't. They can't. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> uh, 
there's your best original screenplay, no question. <laughs> hey, Servo, come on, it's okay, it's just a movie clip. I just got off the phone with my broker. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, before we meet our very special guest, Ed Asner, it's time to take a look at another entry in the best actress category. Winona Ryder is nominated for her role as Joe in Little Women, the charming, heartwarming Louisa May Alcott story with no conflict. <gasps> Josh, I'm sorry. No, 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 stay. It's not bad. Hiding place. You see, I don't uh, know anyone, so I feel awkward just standing and staring at people. I should have put on my jacket. Oh, I never know the rules. Here, uh, um, I'm Laurie. Theodore Lawrence, but I'm, uh, I'm called Laurie. Joe Mart. Um, so, who are you staring at? Uh, you, actually. What, uh, what game were you playing? <laughs> I don't know, but I think I won. <laughs> Lovely. A beautifully photographed period Chick piece. Movie. And a fine, stirring performance by Winona Ryder. Chick movie. Well, there's definitely an Academy Award waiting for Winona Ryder on Oscar night. Chick movie. Where was the dad in this story? Oh, you see, the dad was at the Civil War. He was this guy who was tamping down a cannon, and a rod went right through his skull and completely changed his personality. They call him the first lobotomy. Cool. Hey, that's like the guy in the Civil War who got shot in the testicles, and the bullet went right through him, and it hit this woman just right, and pow, she got pregnant. Wow. Yeah. Blow my mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah cool, huh? <laughs> well, Little Women. Chick movie. Yeah. Now, the next nominee in the Best Actress category is Jessica Lange for her performance in Blue Sky. Carly, nobody's going to hurt you. You touch me. Don't you touch me. I wouldn't let anybody hurt you. I can see it. I can see that radiation just coming off you. No. No, you get your f***ing contaminated hands off me. Carly. Well, she's mental, too. Another mental lady. There's a mental lady in Tom and Viv. And don't forget the mental girls in Heavenly Creatures. Oh, this is Hollywood's Year of the Mental Woman. We, we salute, salute you, mental, mental women, women of Hollywood. Hollywood. And the we'll be thing. right back with Ed Asner. <laughs> 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 and now, folks, a very special moment for Servo and I, mm -hmm. as we are proud to introduce a very talented stage, television, and screen actor, fresh from his role in The Girl Most Likely to, Mr. Ed Asner! Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah, all right, hey, you guys, this isn't going to take long, is it? Because, you know, frankly, I'm not all Don't you about worry about it, Ed Asner. Yeah, you just go stand over there, Ed Asner. Come on, go, 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 While go, go, Ed Asner shoot, stands over there shoot, quietly, shoot, shoot. why don't we take a look at another of the picks for Best Picture? Hope Dreams, the delightful comedy starring those irascible potheads Cheech and Chong. Uh, um, uh, Tom, that's nice, Dreams, the Cheech and Chong movie. Oh. This is Hoop Dreams, and it was only nominated for editing. Oh. Kind of a sore subject. The producers have been bellyaching every chance they get. Well, let's look at it anyway. Derek Zinnemann's layup pushes Marshall to a one-point lead. Moments later, a Westinghouse foul, and then a double technical puts Arthur on the line with a chance to ice the victory. Ah, what happens? Oh, oh, oh well, it wasn't nominated, so uh, let's take a look at someone who didn't fail. <laughs> Nominee for Best Actor, Mr. John Travolta. Well, this is the best cast I've ever worked with. I mean, so, you know, it's an honor to work with, with terrific actors. Oh, is that so, mister? Well, why not just walk up to Gabe Kaplan, and when you're good and ready, just go right ahead and spit in his face. Because that's exactly what you're doing when you say Tom, things like that. Tom, what Tom, kind of a man? Calm <laughs> down. He didn't mean it. And now for some Oscar trivia. Did you know that for the very first year in Oscar history, Pulp Fiction was nominated along with four other nominees that have never been nominated before? Wow. Pulp Fiction is our last nominee in this astounding category, so let's just see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> Don't you hate that? Hate what? Uncomfortable silences. Why do we feel it's necessary to yak about bull****? 
in order to be comfortable? I don't know. That's a good question. That's when you know you found somebody really special. And you can just shut the up for a minute, comfortably share silence. Well, I don't think we're quite there yet, but don't feel bad. We just met each other. Sure. <laughs> well, maybe if she wasn't such a potty mouth, she'd have an easier time on her dates. Yeah, the way I understand it is you find that throughout the picture. The kind of filth and moral decay that it promotes make it one of the best movies of this or any year. That's right. It's a hideous, repulsive, drug-laced, intensely violent ride for the whole family. <laughs> yes, there's bullets tearing, virgin flesh, needles plunging into tinder veins, men hideously violating other men. So bring Grandma and enjoy. I think it's the best picture of the year. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, that's all the time we have. That's we right. want to thank our special guest, Ed Asner. Yep, what? Yep. What? That's it? What? What the heck was this all about? Hey, anyway? Look, Ed Asner, we couldn't use you. Get used to it, pal. Yeah, you're a pro. Suck it up, buddy. Get out of here. Uh, well, we hope we've helped you out. Thanks for watching and have fun at the Academy Awards. The, the night the stars, stars salute, salute themselves. themselves. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna finish your cream cracker? Yeah. <laughs> to mention that Shawshank Redemption was nominated for Best Picture 2. It's a story of a Shawshank that gets redeemed and it's really good and we think it'll win Dubai. <laughs>